Welcome down the rabbit hole, friends. We are here to get into the down and dirty of chapter one of Brittany's new memoir, The Woman in Me. I'm obviously, I'm in the midst of an abusive relationship, um, likely with Cody Brown or Kate Goslin or one of the many other people that I cover, or it could just be that my son banged his head into my lip when we were playing. No need to call the police, but um, if you feel that you must, you know, it would at least get me some attention. So go ahead. Okay, for me, chapter one is all about the tragedy that occurred in the past for the Spears family, which heavily informed Jamie Spears' decisions about how to interact and treat his daughter, Brittany. Meanwhile, they're living here. 3,200 men and women all gathered together in a modern mental institution, a city in itself, complete with every facility for effective treatment. Though shortages in hospital personnel do exist, patients are secure and comfortable, and most of them are happy. Brittany writes, tragedy runs in my family, okay? Because Brittany's middle name is Jean, named after her grandmother, Emma Jean Spears, who met with an extremely tragic ending when her son, Jamie, was just a small child. This is so important to our understanding of the Brittany narrative and the dynamics that go on within the Spears family. So Brittany starts this chapter talking about Emma Jean Spears, kind of paying homage to her. Emma Jean was married to June Spears Sr. And according to Brittany, her grandfather was abusive. We live a decent kind of life. We fathers have a little time to watch our kids and play with them. They see us in the daytime. The people who laid out this place didn't forget that air and sun are what we need for growing whether it's flowers or babies. Just watch us grow. The scales won't hold us soon. In her 20s, Emma Jean, Brittany's grandmother, lost a baby when he was only three days old. He passed away. Emma became extremely despondent, crying, depressed, unhappy, unmanageable. And soon, her husband, June, sent her to Southeast Louisiana Hospital which was at the time an asylum in Mandeville, in Mandeville, Louisiana. A big part of this story and the journey of Emma Jean is that while she was in the asylum, she was put on the popular bipolar medication, lithium. She was on lithium for a period of time, came back home, but then in 1966, as her symptoms continued to erupt, Emma Jean, committed SI. She shot herself with a shotgun while standing over her infant son's grave. That three-year-old baby that they had buried, she decided to go to the grave to commit her act. It had been eight years since his death and she had been mourning him the entire time. People in the family say it was grief that killed her. But June, Britney Spears' grandfather seemed to soldier on quite quickly from this tragedy. Britney doesn't have a lot of good things to say about June in my estimation. She claims he was a sports fanatic and a perfectionist who made her father, Jamie, exercise and practice over and over again past the point of exhaustion throughout his childhood. Brittany writes, each day when my father finished basketball practice, no matter how tired and hungry he was, he still had to shoot a hundred more baskets before he could come inside. So June, her grandfather, was an officer for the Baton Rouge Police Department. And he ended up having a total of 10 children with three different wives, you guys. So he moved on from Jean pretty quickly. Brittany writes, as far as I can tell, no one has one good word to say about the first 50 years of his life. Even in my family, it was said that the Spears men tended to be bad news, especially in terms of how they treated women. Wow, so there's a lot to unpack here. Brittany's grandmother potentially was dealing with some severe mental health issues to allegedly to include 
possibly some sort of postpartum depression, which we saw, which we have seen in Brittany's life and a bipolar disorder, which we have allegedly potentially seen in Brittany's life as well. It's interesting that she was also given the medication lithium, which we have been told through court records, Brittany has been forced to stay on for quite a long time. Lithium is often used for cases of bipolar disorder, and there are some severe side effects that occur with it. Many times when people look at Brittany now, they talk about how she looks and acts in her social media. Some of the criticisms they bring up or the concerns that they have can be linked back to long-term use of lithium. They open their mouth big and wide. You should always see their bottom row of teeth. Especially Brittany, her bottom teeth have always been a part of her smile. Whether she is smiling big or talking or being goofy. We always used to see her top and bottom row of teeth quite frequently. She never has had missing teeth on her bottom row and she has never had all gum on the bottom row. And the cornerstone of everything about this tragedy in the family is how it likely affected Britney Spears' father, Jamie Spears. He was 13 years old when Jean killed herself on the grave of her baby boy. It was a huge trauma, according to Britney, something that would live with him for the rest of his life. Brittany says that Jamie was also a perfectionist about his kids, not so much about himself. He was drinking. He turned to the bottle, used alcohol, but when it came to his kids, he was making them exercise and work hard to the point of exhaustion as well. When speaking about her father, Brittany writes, he drank until he couldn't think anymore. He'd disappear for days at a time. When my father drank, he was extremely mean. We heard in the prologue that Brittany was scared. She was afraid to be in that home. She was living with an alcoholic. And I know from personal experience, that can be a very scary and unsafe family, familial relationship to endure when you are a young child. Brittany does let us know that her experience of her grandfather, June, being a granddaughter, was fairly positive because by the time she came along, June was much older and he was kind and loving to the kids when they were around him. She describes him as patient and sweet to her, but there's no doubt that June set off a series of events in this family by potentially not being very supportive, recognizing the mental health needs of Jean early on, and passing down to Jamie Spears. The idea that the way you handle someone with a mental health illness is to get them committed to an asylum and heavily medicate them. Brittany claims that her mother's world was totally the opposite from her father's. In chapter one, Brittany goes through this whole background um, that, that her mom has narrated for her about their family history. She says that her mom comes from a family that was very elegant and sophisticated. Her grandmother on her mom's side, Lillian Portel, was from London. She met her husband during World War II. They got married and he brought her home and he brought her home to his dairy farm outside of New Orleans, Louisiana. Now, it's interesting because Brittany looks back on, back on this and she thinks to herself, I wonder what my grandmother Lily was thinking as she's coming from this life of sophistication, education, and so many amazing city wonders and sights around her to come to live on a farm in Louisiana. She writes, I sometimes think about Lily riding through Louisiana countryside, looking out into the night, realizing that her large, vibrant, music-filled life of afternoon teas and London museums was about to become small and hard. Instead of going to the theater or shops for clothes, she would have to spend her life cooped up in the country, cooking and cleaning and milking cows. It's interesting that, you know, Brittany sees it this way. It makes you feel like she really values a life of fast paced, vibrant art and music. She definitely fancies herself as being an artist. And she looks back at her grandmother and thinks about how hard it would be to live out in the country all by herself. She says that her grandmother ended up keeping to herself, reading a lot of books, and never went home to London. Brittany's mother, Lynn, also grew up with money. Though Lynn does describe her mom as being maybe a little bit ditzy, I don't know if there was some ADHD going on there, but they had money and they were well taken care of. 
especially for rural Louisiana. Lynn attended a private Catholic school. She was, according to Brittany's writing, like very popular, <laughs> quite beautiful. Brittany describes her as being gorgeous, and so many men in the town wanted to give her rides on their motorcycles, if you know what I mean, both figuratively and literally, I think. But it's Brittany's father that took a keen interest in Lynn. And because his own father, June, had made him work so hard in life, he was very successful in sports. So this was something that drew Lynn into him. Brittany writes, by all accounts, their relationship was born of mutual attraction and a sense of adventure. But the honeymoon was long over before I came along. All right, that's the end of chapter one. I know that these chapters seem really short, but I'm like, I kind of love this. To me, this is a huge chapter. I went down a rabbit hole looking at all these pictures of the old asylum um, back in Mandeville. I looked up some pictures of Brittany's grandmother, and I, I am just like stuck in my head thinking about what her life was like you know, the journey and the road that she traveled down and how so much of it is now superimposed onto what is happening with Brittany. There are so many famous books where the characters remind me so much of what we are seeing right here, right now in this story about Jean. A woman who appears like a little bit crazy, who loses a child and deals with extreme grief and then everybody around her and the reaction from everyone around her is what is wrong with you you're going crazy we need some help for this woman what's what's happening here sending her to an asylum in the 1950s um, there were all kinds of experimental procedures going on like electroshock therapy it's something that I have been very interested in learning more about everything that happened back in the day and the research I've done says that it definitely happened at Mandeville I would like to think that we've come so far since the days that Jean was put into an asylum in Louisiana and yet look at what's happened to her granddaughter in the 21st century. There's still a lot to unpack about this family history and what is going on with Brittany. Thank you for joining me for chapter one. Chapter two will be coming out shortly.